Thank you for coming. I know it's, it's a Chinese New Year and uh, most of the students are not here. And, and first of all, I would like to say thank you to Dunkin' Donuts, our sponsor today. And uh, today's topic is going to be about curiosity. So uh, we've been honored by Mr. Diego de la Rosa to share his op uh, experience and knowledge about the term curiosity. So let's not waste our time. Let's welcome Mr. Diego. Please give him a big round of applause. Thank you very much. Um, as we are not too many, can you come forward a little bit? Maybe it's easier to speak in a closer way. Um, well, again, thank you very much for being here. Um, my name is Diego de la Rosa. I'm from Colombia. I'm a social media and communication specialist uh, working for the UN and different countries in different regions. And um, more my, ba my main experience is in social media. So um, when I was approached, for this talk, um, and they told me that the global theme is curiosity. I said, okay, we definitely need to work something around curiosity and social media. So that's why I'm here. Um, for those who don't know, I guess you, most of you know, but for those who don't know, Creative Mornings is a global series of lectures for the creative community. And uh, it happens in 180 cities around the world in 65 countries, and Bangkok is one of them. I'm lucky enough to have been um, a speaker back home in Colombia, and now I'm here in my second home, also a speaker, so I'm very, uh, very glad and very honored to be here. So thank you very much again for being here. Um, um, again, today we're going to be talking about curiosity. Before we start, if you're going to be posting anything, these are my handles, and uh, these are the official hashtags for the, cre the Creative Mornings in Bangkok and for the global theme this month. Um, we're going to be talking today about Again, curiosity and social media and digital outreach and engagement in times of FOMO. Before we start, I want to say that basically, um, whether you're using social media for, I mean, whether you are on social media for personal use or for uh, marketing purposes, um, curiosity plays a very important role in social media. So we're going to be looking at that for both perspective, and then we're going to have a little discussion about it. Um, first of all, who here doesn't know who, what, what is FOMO? What does it mean? Okay. A couple of people that don't know at all what FOMO is. Who knows? Too shy to speak. Or you, or, or you know. No one knows. Okay, well, this is interesting. I thought everyone would know. A couple of people told me, what, the, what does that even mean? And then, okay, we can see what it means. FOMO is the fear of missing out. And it's very related to social media. And it's very related to curiosity. Basically, it's the anxiety that an exciting event uh, or interesting event may currently be happening elsewhere, of often aroused by posts that you see on social media. I realize we have to put this, sorry, in full screen. OK, yes. Um, so yeah, basically, you're at home on a, on a Friday night, and then you're ready to go to sleep, you have your pajamas on, and then you pull out your phone and you start looking at social media on Instagram, on Facebook, and you see that all your friends are at a party the same time you're about to sleep. So you start getting anxious that you should be with them, you should be in that event, but you're missing out. So you have informal. And it, it doesn't only happen for parties, it can only also happen for a conference, for an event, for an art show for an exhibition, for a concert, all kinds of events. So we get FOMO many times, and we don't even know until now <laughs> that we're getting anxious because of social media and our curiosity on what others are doing. So before we move forward on other concepts of curiosity, I want to just touch a little bit on social media in Thailand. And actually, it's very interesting because Thailand has a very particular context with, like, with relation to social media. Um, um, basically, half of the Thai population has access to social media, which is a large number for a country, and then um, at least 30 million people in, only in Bangkok are uh, Facebook users, active users, so that's a large number. And average Thai person has, uh, spends at least three hours on social media every day. So we can see here, these are numbers from last year, some of, the, some of the social media channels that are most used in Thailand, Facebook comes first, when 
YouTube second with 72%, Line is a very interesting case with 55%, and this is from last year, I am guess right now it's probably higher. Um, this is to tell you that uh, what I was saying before, um, <clears throat> this context of social media in Thailand is very particular because somehow it comes a bit a couple of years later than in the West, and then what happens in Thailand still feels quite new. Thailand is still in some kind of romance with social media, with Facebook and with, with, all, with all these social media channels, whereas in other countries, particularly in the West, people start, these relations start to decrease. People don't like too much to be on social media, to post too much on social media, but still in Thailand it's a big thing, and it's interesting to explore that. Uh, the case of Line is very interesting as well. I, I want to touch on that because Line is an application uh, created in Asia and actually quite popular in this region, but not as popular in other regions. So like in other regions in, of the world. Yes, it is available, but it's not always as popular as you have it here that everyone will talk to you online instead of WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger. As you can see here, um, WhatsApp is only below, very below in this list and WeChat and all this. So um, is this is just to understand a little bit of the, of the context. Um, uh, sorry. Okay, this uh, slide is about so no, total number of Facebook users by country, and you can see uh, by country the f number one country in the world is the U.S. with 219 million people. This is 11 percent of people using Facebook around the world, and Thailand is number nine with 47 million. And even more interesting. The top cities in the world, the highest number of Facebook, active Facebook users is Bangkok. And you are here in this conference about social media understanding. This happens and what we, how we relate to, um, to curiosity in social media. So now let's talk about curiosity. Why, how does curiosity link to social media? We, you probably be asking yourselves, uh, what, is, what is the link, what is the relation? Basically. Human beings are curious by nature. It's in our nature to, to, to be interested in what others are doing. We always ask, we always snoop. We always want to check what, I do, what my, my neighbor is doing, my friends are doing. And this is part of what we do. Don't feel bad about it because we, all, we are all like that. And this is, this is scientifically proven. And um, we are, of course, always in a constant search to feed that curiosity. The good thing or the interesting thing about social media is that it offers a, a space, a platform for where you give and you take. You give your own information. Most social media channels, you have to register your name, your location, your, your language and so on. And usually you post your pictures of your brunch, your pictures of your parties, your selfies. But then also you get access to everyone's information and everyone's picture. So it's a bit of uh, exchange in a way, right? And then here I'm going to show you this uh, diagram of how it works more or less. This is a bit of a, a relatively um, uh, approach, a relative approach of how it works in terms of creation of content and, and, and people who actually receive this content. You have a small group of people who are the actual, who are the actual creator of content on social media. They're the ones who are posting all the time creating uh, videos, creating Insta stories, creating uh, Facebook posts, etc., sharing links and so on. Uh, then you have the reactors who are the ones who like, share, comment, but they don't really post that much. And then you have the lurkers. This is the majority. I was saying before that in Thailand, we still have a very good like, a romance with social media. So every like, majority in Thailand, the case is opposite. We have a lot of people who are, who are creators. And, less and, and everyone also reacts and, and participates. People is very active on social media. Um, in the West, it's probably more like in this, in, in this pyramid. You have less creators and more lurkers. So we're going to look at that a little bit. Um, then now for the pers from the social media perspective, we have the curiosity gap, which is, which is an academic concept. And then basically, it refers to a state that occurs when people can identify a gap between what they currently know and what they would like to know. This gap makes people take action. This concept was coined by the academic George Lowenstein in 1994. And basically, you will see, you will identify how this works. Basically, it's a, it, it was popularized around 2000, um, I would say 12 to 13. 
by websites such as um, BuzzFeed and Upworthy. And basically what they do is they give you these titles where they give you a little bit of information. They give you these numbers. They tell you a little bit of what's going on, but they don't give you everything. So that gap of information is what makes you click on the link and go to the website and try to read, even if it sounds as silly as 21 baby elephants who know how to party, you will click on it because you know there's going to be elephants and you know there's going to be some party, but you don't know exactly what's hap what happens. So that's the curiosity gap. And that's how this relates to social media. And the question is, does it work? Well, yes, it does. It has worked for some time. It works especially if your audience is very broad, very ample. These websites, such as BuzzFeed and Upworthy, have huge, broad, ample audiences that are all over the world. They even produce content in different languages. And what happens is they cater for a large, large, large uh, and diverse population. So for them, it used to work. The thing is, we have to consider a couple of elements here. First, um, like I mentioned before, the use of social media decreases and people in, in the West and people start to be more conscious about their use the social media when they click on something they're more conscious about it so this practice is already um, many many people is like have have a second thought when they see a, a, a headline like this because they feel like okay this is gonna be some silly silly stuff I don't want to click on that I, f I feel I'm gonna be tricked and but also what what happened at the moment when they started to do this and it became very popular and very famous is they um, started to find that, yes, it could drive links, it could drive traffic to the websites. People would click on it, click on the links because they were interested in the gap of information that they didn't have. But then th there was a high rate of bounce. People were not engaging in the content where they actually reached the pages because it's not relevant to them or they, because they felt tricked by these pages. For instance, the example I have here, I never thought a slice of pie would make me so angry. Then you have a very you know, delicious pie in the picture, and you don't know exactly what, it, what it, this is about. Does anyone have an idea what this article is about? Any guesses? Not really. Well, I thought it was going to be like a recipe, or maybe a new restaurant, or maybe, some, maybe it was very expensive. But then when I click on the video, that's why I'm bringing this example here. When I click on the video, it's a... Uh, um, the link takes you to a video about the inequality gap in the US. And they use a pie chart to explain about this. So basically what they're telling you, <laughs> they, they're, they're tricking you into coming to a link and to clicking on a website. It was an interesting video, yes, and I saw it, but I, I felt a big trick as, a, as, as an audience. So, and then I guess that's a feeling that you constantly get when you click on these kind of links. So that's an example, right? That this one is an example of something that I will show you after. What comes next will blow your mind. You have seen these kind of headlines on social media. It still happens. I guess in Thai language, you probably have a version of this. Um, uh, and it's click baiting. You probably have heard this as well. It's a common term. It has been discussed widely in the, probably the last year and a half uh, because it's linked and it's related to <clears throat> has been associated to the fake news tendency and then basically is um, social media networking sites are trying to decrease uh, 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 owners, account owners to, to the use of this by account owners. So um, clickbaiting, just for you to know, is the intentional act of over-promising or otherwise misrepresenting in a headline, social media, in an image, or some combination, can be a combination of both, what you're going to find when you read a story on the web. And they usually use these phrases such as, you won't believe, what happened next will shock you, etc. Basically, they do is they, they bring you in with, with a fake promise, pretty much. And that, I feel, I always felt that this is like the, like the less honest cousin of the curiosity gap because the curiosity gap, at least they leave something out. They're just leaving you a gap of curiosity, so you go and click. But this one, they promise you something fake. So I feel that they're related, but they're not necessarily the same. Of course, that there's not a formal distinction. That's just my, my, my appreciation of, of it. 
Uh, for me, the clickbaiting is more like a, like a very dishonest practice to fish on people to click or like your page. But, you know, I will show you an example. You won't believe what Facebook just did to clickbait. This is the kind of thing that it's clickbaiting, you know? And then I'll show you what they did. It's, I don't know how to, let me just click here. Facebook is still working on weeding out clickbait from your newsfeed. On Thursday, the company announced it'll be implementing a new algorithm to combat deceiving headlines. Facebook describes clickbait headlines as headlines that intentionally leave out crucial information or mislead people, forcing people to click to find out the answer. With that in mind, a Facebook team measured thousands of headlines against two criteria. Did the headline withhold information people would need to understand the content of the article? And did the headline exaggerate the article to mislead the reader? Facebook says its new system identifies phrases commonly used in clickbait that are not used in other headlines. Links from pages or websites that consistently post those types of headlines will start showing up lower in your newsfeed. The change not only impacts users, but also puts pressure on media outlets to be more straightforward in their headlines if they want priority in your newsfeed. For Newsy, I'm Samantha Crook. So yeah, <clears throat> this is just a short video to show you what, how um, social media channels are trying to you know, reduce the use of clickbait and reduce the, make, make uh, social media more honest for everyone. For people who post content, and this is for marketers and also for the audiences. So again, going back to the original idea, why curiosity is important for social media. I think it's very important to understand that curiosity is a crucial element for social media because people we're curious by nature and we want, to under, we want to know what others are doing, we want to know what our favorite brands are coming up with, but it's important to also be honest. So I'm gonna give you uh, what I call is like a mantra of, in my practice of social media, what I do uh, in, my, in my personal and my work at work, what I, what I do with social media. Basically, I try to always keep it honest. Keep, keep honesty to my brand or to my organization, to the true mandate of the organization, to the true uh, voice of the organization, of the, of the brand, of your personal uh, account, you always have to be honest to that, and you have to be honest to your audience. So if you use clickbait, you're not being honest. So try to avoid it. And then um, be creative. Creativity is what, what is the antidote for clickbaiting. If you come up with a creative headline, if you come up with a creative picture, image, or mix of both, then you're going to bring people in. And be consistent. It's good to have... Uh, consistency, if you um, are posting great content but you're doing it every now and then and it's not consistent and people is not seeing you constantly, you might lose followers, people might stop liking you, following you, etc. And then last but not least, very important, quality content. Quality images, quality video, quality captions. Sometimes people focus a lot on, oh my picture is the best, but then they come up with captions that are not interesting or too long or not relevant or just plain boring. So make sure that your content is high quality and then if you're honest, if you're creative, if you're consistent, if you, have, if you offer high quality content, then you get all the likes without uh, having to recur to dishonest practices such as clickbait. This has been uh, a little bit of the presentation. Sorry if I speak too, too fast, but um, that's how I do it. Um, I don't know if you have questions, comments, ideas. <clears throat> We're moving on to Q&A session. Any questions or comments about uh, curiosity or to Mr. Diego? Yeah. Good morning. Thank you so much for your, for your presentation. Going back to the example with the pie, uh, do you believe it, you will consider it as clickbaiting or you will consider it as a creative way to attract people about... Uh, Sometimes there might be a fine line between this yes. creativity part and this way to, yeah. I mean, the, yes. So maybe yeah. you can comment I, a bit on this. I I think that's a that's a mixture. Yeah. That example is a mixture because when they tell you there's 21 ways to, I don't know, to how the tea you drink describe your personality, then then that that is the gap curiosity. But when they tell you that you won't believe something that you're gonna read, then that's clickbaiting. Okay. This one in particular, the 
through the picture, they're telling you, they're, they're trying to sell you a concept. You, you don't know exactly what it is, it, but you're attracted by the picture. But the headline tells that, that it makes you angry. It's going to make you angry. So I feel it's a mixture of both. I still feel it's not terrible, but it's probably not ideal. I feel that there's, a, there's a, like you said, it's a fine line between the two. So I will continue. Oh, sorry. Oh, continue. Okay, I wonder whether this is like a more practice in Western than Asia, or it's the same. Do you like have a, any? The, the practice the, of clickbaiting. The practice of yeah. Yeah, it's, I think it's worldwide. Uh, I I I wouldn't be able to tell in Thailand, but I'm guessing that it, that it happens because sometimes I see things written in Thai with these pictures. Sometimes what they do basically. I didn't want to bring up some those examples, but sometimes they put a picture of a, of a, of a half-naked person, and then, then they, they put a title, you, w you won't believe what she did, or what he did. And then people will click on it, you know, because, they, because it, 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 it promises that basically the person is going to get naked, and you're going to see a naked person. So they do this, this, this practice is, 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 is common all over the world, but now they're trying to reduce it because it's not, uh, it's not honest, and it's very linked also to fake news, which is what I mentioned before, and they're trying to reduce fake news and clickbaiting and so on in their social media sites. <coughs> Early on, you showed us that there are around 30 million users in Bangkok. Yes. So does it mean that people use multiple accounts, or does it mean that there are physically 30 uh, there millions? Are th in the 30 million is 30 million Facebook active users. That mean 30 million, that 30 million people that have, act, that have a uh, Facebook account and that they use it actively. That means they not only have the account. In what has happened with Facebook particularly in the West most likely is um, that many uh, people have the account but they don't really use it, they don't even log in. But here people is actually people who consider active, is, that means you log in every now and at least once a week or something. You are active on the, on the account and you post and you, you know. So like I was saying, here there's the romance with social media, particularly Facebook, is still going on. In other countries, in other regions, not that much, but it still happens, so it's interesting to look at this. Just the last question, and on the last fact that, um, I mean, yes, people are b becoming more and more conscious on the, on the West that uh, clicking on an ad might get them more out of this type and so on, so are there currently some, some efforts to try to to mitigate this effect or to better protect uh, yeah. sure. people's Be privacy? Since or, yeah. Actually, since 2014, Facebook has been trying to reduce this practice. They have changed, I don't know if you know the algorithm on Facebook, and most social media, uh, net, uh, social media sites have this um, system, which is an algorithm by which they decide which post you see on your newsfeed, basically. They decide based on your interest, based on your marketing uh, uh, you know profile yeah. possibilities yeah. Yeah. or something if you are if you if you're someone who can buy cars they will show you ads of cars mm -hmm. if you're someone who travels they will show you ads of travel of, of Thai Airways mm -hmm. or any other airline so that's this is more or less, more or less how it works however um, they are trying to reduce they, they can decide which post you will see so what they're doing is trying through this algorithm they're trying to reduce the um, the prevalence of of, of links or posts that use clickbait and fake news, both. And there's a number, of, they have done a number, since 2014, they have done like a three or four changes in the algorithm to, to you know, to be, to clean the, the news feeds from clickbait and fake news. So yes, that's, there's, there's, they're trying to reduce it, they're trying to get rid of it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. For your presentation, very interesting. My question is, do you have any information about the type of people who are more inclined to click, you know, to, to be uh, convinced uh, to follow this sort it, of thing? It has to do with media literacy. Uh, people who are more literate on the use of social media uh, are less inclined to, to click. But people with, with lower levels of education, with lower, lower awareness on how media works and how social media works, they will go and click, of course. If you have nothing to do, you're scrolling on your Facebook and you have no better knowledge, you see something like this and then you click on it. 
like, and I'm and I'm and I'm telling you the example of the uh, the videos and the and the links using naked or half naked people. They, this is one of the most common ones, um, and people always click on it. I mean, especially if if you have no understanding or no clear understanding on social media and how it works, and you don't understand well that you are audience for a, for a, for a corporation who's actually selling advertisement. Basically, this is this this is what it is, and then um, then you go and click on it, and then you. You, you are faced with content that is probably not what you were expecting because most of the times when you click on this, what you get is actually an advertisement for something else, for pills or for some kind of, I don't know, service or product. So it's not exactly what you're gonna, what you're gonna see. You're not, you're not gonna get what you are looking after. But yeah, usually you know better when you are better educated about social media, about media, and you know, you understand better the context of social media in society. Anyone else? No? Okay. All right, so I think we've learned a lot from Diego today, and it's really true. There are lots of clickbaiting websites in, in, in Thai websites, and we are very curious about the links, and we click it in, and, we, and it's a phishing website. So, all right, so uh, as, a, as a gift and a token of appreciation, we would like to give Diego just a small souvenir from BU. And Ajahn Hachinok would like to give it to him directly. Yeah. Kurfa. So thank you very much, Diego. And of course, thank you for coming today. Please give him a big round of applause. Once again, uh, I would like to say thank you to our sponsor, Dunkin' Donuts. So if you have time, you can just take out, bring it back home with you. So I'll see you again next month for Creative Mornings, and you can check for the updates on the website. Good luck. Thank you very much for today.